Welcome to the Mama Truth Show, where soulful mamas embrace the whole truth of the messiness and magic of motherhood. Check us out at mamatruthshow.com. Here's your host, Amy Ehlers, the Wake Up Call Coach. Happy Mama Truth Monday, mamas. It's Amy Ehlers, the Wake Up Call Coach and creator of the Mama Truth Circle. And we're back with another Mama Truth show. Are you ready for this one? Because this is all about getting hands on with your children. And I know for me and my household, one of the biggest struggles I have as a mom, especially with a two and a half year old and a nine year old with such a huge age difference, is how the heck do I find activities that they will both enjoy or that will occupy one so I can hang out with the other one and get them off the screens? I mean, my two, she's almost three now, but she's literally could be addicted to the iPhone if I let her. So <laughs> I thought I'd bring on an expert today about how to really become hands on with parenting. Her name, her name is Jamie Reimer, and she has an incredible website that I invite all of you to check out, which is handsonaswegrow.com, handsonaswegrow.com. She has an awesome free seven-day challenge to get you grooving and hands-on with your children. She's a former marketing manager turned stay-at-home mom. And when her youngest was two and a half years old, right around Evie Rose's age, she decided that she wanted to start really doing hands-on activities with him. And that was way back in 2011. It was her 2011 New Year's resolution. And so she created this blog. And I have to tell you, everyone, that this is the blog that I go to. This is not even a blog. It's so much more than a blog. It's like an entire resource that I go to the minute there, it's raining. I'm like, what am I going to do with my children? And this is my go-to resource. And Jamie's newsletter is always chock full of the best guides, the best resources, and she has an incredible community. I highly recommend it. So Jamie, thank you, darling, so much for being here on the show. Thank you so much, Amy, for having me. I'm so excited. Well, I'm excited and nervous. I'm very excited to be here. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So I would just love, you know, I feel like right now as moms, we you know, screens are such a huge thing, keeping our children active. We want to be these really great moms and then we beat ourselves up when we're not. And I'm curious for you on your motherhood journey, what had you really get inspired when your youngest was two and a half years old to start doing more hands-on activities with him? Well, a lot of things came into play um, at that time. One, I just had my second child about a couple months before that. Yeah. Um, and I think I was actually a little bit uh, postpartum, um, uh, postpartum depressed or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's kind of borderline. So I was kind of in that mode. Um, yeah. Of, Feeling the funk. Yeah. The funk. Yeah. Terrible <laughs> Yeah. The mommy <laughs> blues, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I also lost my mother-in-law six months prior to this too. So I was really in the funk. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, it was just a bad time for me. And then I was trying to remember my own childhood, trying to be a good mom, trying to think of what my mom did with me. And we did crafts all the time. So I was like, yeah. I'm going to try this. So I, um, around the same time, <laughs> uh, my, I guess, what would I call her? My, my husband's aunt, who's my age. Yeah. <laughs> weird but um she suggested starting a blog because I was starting to read all these blogs and I'm like what would I start a blog about <laughs> I'm like I have no idea I don't have anything that good to say or <laughs> anything to write about yeah um and I kind of just put all the things together and I needed an outlet for myself and I needed um some place to keep me accountable to do these or okay so I decided I wanted to do these activities yeah <laughs> with the kid or with Henry at the time it was yes with my two-month-old can't do them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're wearing the two-month-old in the sling while you're trying to do an activity. <laughs> yeah, you're not happening. Happening. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, okay, sorry, I got way off track here. <laughs> oh, no, you're perfect. You're perfect. But, so your, aunt, um, your, aunt, um, your husband's aunt suggested that you start a blog. And, that, and I know for me, like even just putting something out on Facebook that I'm going to do it, does okay. increase that accountability it and all does. of a sudden you're yeah. like well, you go public of like this is something that's important to me I'm going to do this and so I can imagine the blog really pulled you forward that was exactly the point of the blog I actually wrote my first blog post was saying hey this is my 2011 resolution I'm gonna start doing some hands-on activities with Henry yeah and my goal was I was gonna do four activities every week uh, four awesome. new ones um kind of thing and 
I'm going to write about them here and tell you how it goes kind of thing. And that's where it all started from. So I'm like, every week I had to write something saying, this is what we did this week because I'm going to do wow. this. And it just totally changed the whole feeling in my house. Like I, um, wow. it just gave me something to look forward to doing um, both the activities and the accountability on the blog. Both yeah. of them. Um, and it just made my house, like my whole interaction with my son changed. I wasn't just trying to get through every day because of the postpartum kind yeah. of thing. Um, I actually gave me some kind of purpose a little bit. So I love that. That is so, I, and I know there's moms listening right now that are like, wow, having that kind of commitment of just four activities a week or going yeah. on and doing the seven day challenge like you offer people. I just love the idea of that having something to look forward to as a mom yeah, with your some time. Kind of purpose and some kind of, then it creates, uh, her, hopefully it spurs some other connections down the road. Of, of course. And that's kind of the goal overall. I love that so much. And I remember, I think I sent you a picture of Evie. I, I was like, Flower. trying to figure out what to do with her. And I'm like, I know I'm going to go on to hands on as we grow.com. And then I just like, it was like the simplest thing. This is what I want all of you mamas to know is that what Jamie does is she takes things that you already have in your house and helps you create an activity. And she does it all by the ages of your children too. So it's like for Evie, I literally took out a, a baking sheet and put flour on it. And she sat there for like 30 to 40 minutes, just getting messy with the flour. Next time I was like, I would do that on the front porch next time. <laughs> a little easier with the cleanup. But she had a blast. And I felt like the most badass mom. <laughs> yeah. like, oh my God, I did it. You rocked it. I know, right? <laughs> it's so funny how that is, how anytime, I know for me, I'm like, anytime I like cook a meal for my kids that didn't come from like a frozen thing from Trader Joe's or yeah. a human activity that's like, you know, something that really, there's a craft element to it. I just feel so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so good. Oh my gosh. Well, so, okay, so here's my question here's what I'm curious about. How the heck do you come up with all of these activities? Where, like, where in your imagination and creativity do you come up with these things? Because it is unbelievable, the things. Well, like, laying in bed at night. <laughs> really? <laughs> A lot of times, like, my best ones actually are. Because I remember, like, all my spider web tape spider web. I don't know if you know it. Um, it's a Halloween spider web taped in a big doorway. I remember vid vividly laying in my bed at like 10 30 at night and being like, that's what we got to do tomorrow. Oh my gosh. That's so <laughs> awesome. Why it just, um, came to me, but no, at first I started, I simply just started looking at other blogs. Um, yeah. I actually first ordered a book. Um, I'll put it out there. The toddler's toddler's busy book. I think of 365. It's just, it doesn't oh. even have pictures in it. It's just a very simple activities, things to do today. And that's where I first started yeah uh, just trying activities from and from there you just be like okay I'm gonna try that with a twist or I'll try it with this material instead or it just starts wow it just kind of other things mushrooms from there how like do you know how many activities you now have on your website on like six uh, years later? I don't actually number of activities um but I have over 1200 published posts of activities wow. in, in roundups so there's 1200 of those wow yeah, so there's several, several hundred. I would yeah. Say. And how many people, not to get too much into the numbers, but I'm just curious, like thinking of you on that New Year's Day, starting with maybe like your mom and your sister looking at it or whatever, right? And then yeah. now how many people do you estimate look at your blog each month or what have you? Month, um, we have about one and a half million visitors every month. <laughs> I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. Look at what you built, Jamie. That's amazing. It is crazy. <laughs> I know. It's totally crazy. All from my, well, now I have an office. Before it was just an off branch of a kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Oh my goodness. So, okay. So let's say that we're, you know, there's moms here that maybe they have like some, a, a child that's a toddler mm -hmm. or a preschooler. What would you say, and, and it's cold outside and you can't really get outside and you want to do some sort of activity, like what's one of the go-to activities that you would suggest for that mom to do? Okay. Um, well, I have a few. Okay. <laughs> the flower one like you did is a classic. I, we get that out all the time. Yeah. Um, I would suggest for them, like if, when you're stuck indoors, like you wanted to sit, you said you wanted to put it out on the porch. I would yeah. put like a towel down or a shower curtain down or something of that sort or yep. sheet and then just take it outside and shake it off. 
Um, cause it is good. brilliant. Of course I didn't think of that, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah. Sheets work really well. Cause that's something I always have on hand shower curtain. I'd have to like go out and actually purchase a shower curtain. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the other one, um, is a favorite of mine and it's a weird one. It's a can of food and rubber bands. That's it. And then put the rubber bands on the can of food and just have at it. You can have little, like for a two year old, it's kind of hard. So you're going to yeah. show them what to do or how to get it around there. Cause they don't have the fine motor yeah. skills yet, but like a preschooler should be able to do it just fine. And then older kids also like it. Cause they, if, especially if you have colored rubber bands, then you can start patterning and you can count. Um, and you can count when you put them on, count when you pull them off. So that's always a fun one. Um, otherwise just simple classics like threading a Cheerio necklace or a pasta right. necklace. Um, or anything like that. Or of course, fort building is always a classic. Um, we, we are actually having a snow day today, so um, uh, we haven't done this yet today, though, so I need to. Yeah. <laughs> but the um, classic fort building, yeah, totally. So well, have I, some markers and crayons and color pictures. Um, we have a favorite video YouTube channel that we watch for drawing pictures if you want to know about it. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's called Art for Kids, uh -huh. Art for Kids Hub, um, and he's just fantastic with drawing right along with him. He has his like eight-year-old kid drawing with him, and it's just fantastic. So I highly suggest that on any indoor days too. But. I love that. Well, yeah, and it's like, um, like I was saying, Mama's like, this is why I think what Jamie does is so brilliant. Is it's like, I wouldn't have thought of a can with rubber bands, That's and right. how much fun that can give to our little ones for them to just have the experience of doing that. Right, right. Another fun one. Sorry, I just thought of it. Yeah. Um, super simple, super, super simple. Um, is with some painter's tape, and you paint or you tape like five or six lines, like a foot apart, on your floor, and let your kids do whatever they want with it. Seriously, just let them have at it. Um, you can. A lot of times, they like to start at the first line and just jump and see how far they can jump. Yeah. All kids can do this, so yep. it's. I mean. I don't know. And then older kids can then take it a step further by measuring how far did they jump? Like, is this, um, Ugh. like, have, I don't know, actually find like a ruler or something to measure with that they can actually measure how far they go or how far they can stretch or anything like that. Just let them have that. The five lines of tape is a great activity. So do you feel like, um, this kind of thing, like the simplicity of it is, something that changes your mindset like you mentioned it kind of changed your mindset as a parent but is it something that you notice with your children and when your readers get back to you and comment like what are what is their experience what's the impact of doing little things like this with our children it changes the mood of the house like you're yeah. even you're yeah like you said like you'll feel like a rock star parent you don't have to do a heck of a it doesn't have to be so intricate and you don't need the fancy supplies or the one supply that you're going to have to buy for this one activity. Um, you can do it with stuff you have around the house or yeah. something and you'll feel so good about yourself. And that makes that relays to your children. Yes. Life in general. So I just think it helps the overall mood in every which way, whenever we do an act activities, we feel so much better. <laughs> I know it's so true. And yeah. And I just feel like, it, yeah, it's been raining a lot. I'm here in Northern California. It's been raining a ton lately and there's been flooding and all sorts of craziness up here and, and we need the rain. So it's good on one level, but it has led to a lot of in-home things. And my first impulse is always let's pop popcorn and watch a movie, which, you know, that's fine. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> and it's like, after that, you don't need to watch, you know, have a movie marathon day with your two year and a half year old. She doesn't need to be, have that much screen time, you know? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, don't what, feel bad about that. Seriously, don't, if there's nothing wrong with that though, either. I don't want to say that don't use screen time because I'm totally pro screen time too, actually. So you I, are. Yeah, I am. I am totally fine with screens. Yeah. Um, I don't actually set limits on my kids screen time. I set attitudes. <laughs> Once their attitudes change, then they don't get it anymore. That's, that's I love that. Um, that's brilliant, Jamie. I love that. Um, yeah, because there's like, like there is that moment I feel like with either of my girls where it turns from something that's joyful into something that's like, they're going nuts. Right. Yes. And that's time to move on. <laughs> yeah. Time to move on. 
<laughs> Time to go on to hands on as we grow up, <laughs> girls. Oh right. my goodness. Yeah. What for you? What would you say are some of the mistakes that moms make when they're trying to set up an activity or do an activity with their little ones? Um. The, well, okay. One major mistake I think. Yeah. Is trying to replicate it exactly how I did it. Uh huh. Or how you see it done. Yep. You have to do it your own way. It's never going to turn out the same way that I do it. Um, yep. No matter how it's like looks wise or just um, the process wise, it's never yep. going to be the same. So you just kind of got to go with the flow and, and really take the time to enjoy the time. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, and the other thing is back to your like flower sensory example. Um, many parents are afraid to do that because they're afraid of the mess. And I don't want people to be afraid of the mess because that mess is so memorable for kids. <laughs> so, I mean, it's going to make their day. So um, I just don't want parents to be afraid of such trivial things like that, I guess. Um, yeah. I mean, messes can always be cleaned up, but memories are forever. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, well, that's so smart. And I, and I also feel like even with like my youngest, there's also the lesson there of like, okay, now it's time we clean up or like after the fort, I know like my oldest, like, you know, her and her sister, that's like a great activity for them when they'll build a fort, mm -hmm. what have you. And then it's like part of building a fort is actually cleaning up the fort when you're done with the fort and like actually having that be part of the activity and not yeah. having it be a drag, but it's like with, even with Evie, like together we like took the flour that had gotten all over the table and scraped it back into the pan. Yeah. Like Incl tried to make like a little bit of it. <laughs> definitely include them in the cleanup. That makes it so much fun. Yeah. They love using a vacuum. I mean, to suck up all that flour, they're going to love doing yeah. that. Being sucked up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> it's part of the hands-on. There we go. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love it. Awesome. Okay, great. Well, let me ask you our, um, is there anything else you wanted to share before I ask you the last question of the show? Um, I wasn't prepared for anything. No, there's nothing really anything. Um, yeah, just, be, I don't know. I, you were talking about how it changes your attitude yeah. and how we, how we ch change our attitude at home or what's the benefits of doing activities. Yeah. Um, it's, there's a bond that gets created with your kids. I, I am not one of those people that seek out a way to bond with my kids. I'm just, I've never been that for some reason. Um, but I know I have that bond with them with the activities. So it, yeah. it makes me feel like, yeah, I'm super mom. This is how I've accomplished this yeah. <laughs> or whenever. Um, but yeah, there's the bond and I know I'm creating some memories for them. They now ask for activities now and they can, well, mine are now getting old enough that they can actually put together their own activities and do it on their own in their own way. Um, so I don't need to be there guiding it all the time. But anyways, I don't know where I was going with that. No, no, that's, that's beautiful. I love that. And I think that it's, um, it, it's, I, I just love the organicness of the connection that comes about when we just, even if it's just five minutes, get down on the floor with our kids. It doesn't need, well, that's another, it doesn't need to be an all day event or anything. Like right. All the time think they don't have the time to do them. And it's honestly, most activities last 10 to 15 minutes. It's, right. You don't need all day. I totally agree with that. Yeah. I love it. Well, mamas, I hope you've been inspired to get in there and get hands on with your kids. So Jamie, the last question that I ask all my guests is what's messy and what's magical about motherhood for you these days? Uh, messy, everything. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Right now everything's messy because I have two kids in sports and I'm trying to balance that and I've never had this busy season of motherhood yet and I'm getting into that and understanding what that means now and it's yeah crazy yeah um the magical would be how do I explain it that they're growing up <laughs> they're, yeah. it's it's crazy and to see how um independent they are like I said, they can, they'll do these activities on their own now to see that I brought them up in this. Um, wow. They're taking it on on their own. It's kind of crazy to see that. They're just, they're amazing little, little guys. <laughs> so great. Beautiful. 
Well, Jamie, thank you so much. I know being on this interview today was stepping outside your comfort zone. You're usually behind the scenes blogging and doing hands-on activities. So thank you for agreeing and gracing you know, the audience here of the Mama Truth Show with your presence and with your ideas. And again, check out handsonaswegrow.com. Go and take the seven-day challenge with Jamie. You're going to love it. And with that, mamas, keep embracing the messiness and the magic of motherhood. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening, mamas. Did you know that Amy has a new ebook out? It's called Sacred Self-Care for Moms, Seven Steps to Nurturing Yourself So You Can Be the Mom You Were Born to Be. And you can receive your free copy by going to sacredselfcarebook.com. That's sacredselfcarebook.com. And please don't keep the Mama Truth Show a secret. The biggest compliment you can give is to share the Mama Truth Show with your loved ones and write a review on iTunes. Until next time, keep embracing the messiness and the magic of motherhood. <laughs>